Agalos. Okay, excellent. Uh, so I'll turn this over to Gemini. Uh, please proceed. Okay, let me share my screen again. Wrong tab. So has everybody been to this site? We placed that on the, the link on the chat box. I believe it should still be there. Yes, the link is still there. So if you have not signed up for the workshop, uh, please do. I'm going to copy the link again, just in case it's scrolled off for anyone. Right. Here's the link again. And then I can just show it all over again. So it should present you with a login information. If you have Google account logged in in your browser, you can use this. If not, you'll have to create an account, sign up here. Um, so for my case, I'm just going to go to login with Google. And since I'm logged in, it's just gonna bring me right into the application. So we have workshop.msb.com. Um, and then we go to the zero downtime deployments. And right here on the right, we have a start button. So click on that and let me know if you guys are in that area. When I click on the start button, it just goes, it just stays on that screen. Yep, so uh, just do a refresh. It happened to me. Sometimes the browser does that. So just do a refresh. Okay. And then um, That's after the zero downtime deployment, click on start. Uh -oh. And hope, hopefully it should work. Is anyone not there? Raise your hand. Um, no, I hit start and the screen actually refreshes. And I, I'm right back at the screen where the start button is. So do I do I actually need to do that to participate, or can I just watch your screen? Click on the link then. If, if you know, try and get the link again from from the chat. Sure. Okay. Sharon, are you, are you having trouble? Yeah, I, I'm also in the same. I keep hitting start. I did screen refresh. And it still says Kubernetes kickoff. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting the same result too. So, can we just watch your screen? Like, so when you yeah. I think this is if you want to participate. Can you guys go straight to this link then? Is that possible? Are you able to say that again? Or maybe try some of the other ones, like go to Kubernetes kickoff. Try that. I'm just going to watch. Normally, what I do is I just refresh, reload the page, and just do this uh -huh. reload button. And I'll be chose, but. Or right click, reload. And then go so down what happens when you um, click that start button now because I what I have is what you're showing on your screen. Is that the right place to be? Yes. Okay, then we're there. It should be the zero downtime deployments. There's three of them: Kubernetes kickoff, STS, and the zero down downtime. On the right side, see the start button. And when you click that start button, when you click that. Happens. Yeah, see, I can't get to there, but I'm okay. I'm just going to watch your screen. Yeah, I, I'll just watch. I've tried it about a dozen times, yeah. so it's really a sandbox, you know? Yeah, so, I agree. I, I, guys, I, don't get, using, I don't get by the start button screen. Are you guys using Chrome? Yes. I am. Are you using Google Chrome? 
Did you do a, just like a refresh? I've done that several times. Several times? Several times. All right, make a new, a new browser page now. Well, for those that can follow, um, are you all using Google? Are you using Google accounts? I am using a Google. I am. Account. Okay. okay. The other thing we can try before I move on is we can do if you click on this button here at the top left, it looks like a box, and then at the bottom here you'll see this little, you know, what you call that icon, and then there, if you click on that, there should be a logout. See if you can do that. If I do a logout, then it brings me here. And then I just do a refresh, reload, right click, reload. Button. And then just log in again. And then hopefully that works. Zero downtime deployment. You can start. And then I'm here. Same result. Logged out, logged back in, still stuck. Did it work? No. Try going in with incognito mode. Yeah, incognito mode. Give me one more try. How many people don't are not able to access? Raise your hand if you don't have access. So Sharon, Richard. Wow. Four or five people. All right. Let's see. I might have to. I'll work on it on the back on the back end. I might have to upgrade your accounts, guys. Um, but for now, let me move forwards with those that can can follow. Is there anyone? Let me do it the the other way around. How many people are able to follow? Do we have quite a few people able to follow? Craig, would you able to are you able to tell how many people are able to follow? I think I've got about four there that, are, that are able to follow. Are you able to follow? Yeah. All right, let me move forward with this one first. So for those that are able to follow, they can get started. Okay. So I'll just do the start tasks. All right, and basically this is a platform where you just you know follow along. So one of the first commands in Kubernetes is well, basically this is the command line um, application kubectl. Some people pronounce it cube uh, control, cube cattle. So it's up to you. Normally, I just say kubectl. So kubectl and then apply allows you to apply a file. In this, this one is YAML is what we're doing. So for now, this is pod. And this is just very intro right now, just so you see. So this one will allow you to create a pod in Kubernetes. And then we'll see what that is. It's going to show over here, right? So right now, without even understanding what it is, we'll just copy this command, put this here. So what's nice about this learning environment is you have the browser down here, you have the editor up here, and, and then this is where you have like some sort of a graphical interface. So let's apply that. Uh -huh. And then you see that it creates 
the application here. It's basically deploying an application. So um, what Kubernetes is, is it deploys containerized applications. So that means it's everything that you need to run the application is inside that container. We're just deploying that into an infrastructure. So now we've got that up here. And what this, this one is, it's an application that does basically nothing except to run a shell and, and do an echo that says, hello, Kubernetes. That's what it is, right? So if we click on next, actually here, then it shows us a command that we can run to check the logs. So this one, kubectl, right click, copy, right click, paste. And then if I hit enter, then it shows this one, hello, Kubernetes, which is basically, that's what our little application is doing. It's not doing anything much, but we've been able to deploy a containerized application on Kubernetes that way. So let's move on to the next topic, go next. And then now, this is how we deployed it. We just did an apply based on a YAML file that contains the configuration that we wanted to deploy. If we want to delete it, we just issue this command. All right, just right click copy, right click paste. And what this is, is kubectl is our Kubernetes um, CLI. Delete is the command we want to execute. And this one is what type of object we want to delete. In this case, it's a pod. So a pod actually contains the containers. And this one is the name. And in Kubernetes, there's a few ways to do this. Uh, you can also do it in like just instead of doing the slash, you can do a pod space, my my app, the name, that will also work. Um, pod is actually plural in some instances, so you can use pods, right? Um, and that also works. So let me hit enter on this one. So now you can see that it's deleting this one. So now it's stopping the container, you see that? Right, and now it's gone. Okay. And then now we go to the next. So this is very high level. What we've seen is how we deploy an application that's defined in a YAML file, basically. Basically, the application is already inside the container. We're just deploying it. Um, and then how we remove it. So that was delete. Now, here's some more explanation. You can go through this on, on your own when you have time. And I'm going to give you access more uh, to more detailed um, access to this um, the MSB, Magic Sandbox. Um, but right now, it's basically, basically what it's telling us is we have a code. We put that in the container. And I don't know if you've, you're familiar with containers, but Docker is a very popular um, tool that allows us to create containerized applications. Now, once it's in a, a container image, um, then you, with Kubernetes, you can put it inside a Kubernetes concept, which is a pod. A pod will contain your container. And then you can create another Kubernetes concept, which is a deployment. And a deployment contains multiple pods, OK? So for example, you want to have a deployment that has, I don't know, like 100 pods. So if pods is like a, a computer infrastructure that runs your application, you want 100 of them, then you can create a deployment and it will take care of that. And it provides down here self-healing. That means if one of the pod dies, it will recreate it. Scalability, you can tell it to increase you know, to 100 or decrease to only one. And you can do rolling updates. That means that you can uh, do a version one, a version two, a version three of the application. And if you, if, if you uh, release a version three and it's not working so well, you can roll back into a version two. So that's what a deployment 
um, gives us. And this is a, a Kubernetes abstraction or concept. Now let's move forward to the next. Okay, so now here's another sample um, web application. And it's got a deployment right here. So you can see the kind is deployment. So when you hover on that, it kind of highlights that section, kind deployment. And then the application, we give it a name. It's just a metadata, so we can give it whatever name we want. Um, and then here we're saying we want two replicas. So that means that it's going to create two pods, right? Um, and then it's going to be based on, on this one, the msb-hello version one container, which was created by Nigel Poulton, which is a very popular author for um, Kubernetes books and uh, trainings. And we wanted to listen on port 8080. Okay, so it's right here. All right, let's click on next. Right. Um, so now there's another command get. So kubectl get for you to see what objects are out there. For example, nodes, we want to see that. Then we issue the command kubectl get nodes. It will show us you know, what nodes we have out there. All right. And then there's another also command that um, gives us information about our Kubernetes cluster, and that's cluster dash info. You can play on this on your own when you get a chance. All right, now let's do the start tasks over here. Okay. And so let's do this command. kubectl get nodes, right click, copy, and right here, right click, paste. Then let's hit enter. So now we have three nodes here. And in Kubernetes, the nodes are where are the actual like virtual machines where you instantiate your pods. And your pods are the ones that contain your containers. And normally there's a one-to-one -one relationship. There's in one pod, there's one container, but there are instances where you can have a pod with multiple container. So yeah, like a grouping of containers. Um, and in this instance, we have uh, three nodes. One of them is a master and we have two worker nodes. Okay, the master nodes normally is the one that holds the Kubernetes API engine, which responds to the kubectl command that you execute. Okay, now uh, let's go on next. All right, now let's try this kubectl cluster info command. Uh, let me just type it. All right. So our cluster, the master, is running at this internal IP address, 192.168.200.1, right? And it's got its own internal DNS, domain name server, which is running at this one. So that's just for in informational. Let's go on next. Okay, now we're going to do a demo of Docker images. Click on next. Um, we are going to create our first deployment. This is the simple YAML file. Okay, let's do and start tasks. All right. Uh, by the way, there is this other button up here which allows you to open up um, this section on an entirely separate tab, browser tab. 
so that you, you know you'll be able to have more space if you're um, uh, checking out or editing a, a bigger file or typing more commands. Okay. So, I'm sorry, I missed that. Could you, you you said this that and I I wasn't watching it. Okay, so that thing up there. All right. Yes, this, okay. this thing up here. Okay. It will allow you to pop out a window which contains only this portion on the left side. So so that you can you know see more of for example a document that you're editing or you know the commands that you're typing down here because it's you know it's pretty cramped right okay so remember the command we used to uh, deploy a or execute the contents of basically a this is what we call like infrastructure as code, right? So the command is kubectl apply, and then we do a dash f to give it a file name. Okay, so in this instance, we're doing a simple deployment. So let's do that. Right click, copy, right click paste and then hit on enter okay so now this is a deployment so it's created this deployment and a deployment actually creates a what you call a replica set which contains the number of uh, pods right that you specified so for this one we said we only wanted one right so um, it only created one. And then we'll see as we move forwards how we can increase the number of, um, we can scale it up or down, the number of uh, pods. Okay, let's click on check. All right, so the next one is, now we want to expose this one. This one is now just internally visible. It's not visible outside of uh, this section of Kubernetes. So the way we, we uh, uh, the way we make that visible to outside of just the deployment is to, um, to create a service. And here, let's look at this service file here. So the kindest service, right? And this one will be a load balancer type of service. So a load balancer type of service actually uh, communicates with, if for example, you are on AWS cloud, it will create an AWS load balancer for you. If you are on Google cloud, it will create a Google cloud load balancer for you. If you are on hosted uh, on bare metal on your own um, hosting, then uh, there are some constructs like metal lb which allows you uh, allows you to simulate like a cloud type uh, load balancer right? so let's do that let's apply this one right click copy right click paste let's do that Oops, that's wrong. Sorry. There you go. So we're seeing the service over here, and it's actually listening on port 80. And then what happens is when traffic comes here, it forwards that to port 888 into this simple deployment. And the way that it's able to tell that is because it's using this selector. So it's checking on the label app named simple. And anything that's app named simple um, becomes a target for destination for this um, service, load balancer service. All right. So if I click on here, um, it will say that, okay, you know, the service responded, and this is the, uh, the server, which is basically this one. That responded. Okay, 
So we, you know, it's it's getting a little bit more complex now. First, we started with just a simple pod that has a container inside it, and when we did the deployment, we have this deployment concept with a replica set with a pod inside it that contains your container. And then we expose that using a load balancer that listens on port 80 and then forwards the traffic over to this one. Okay, let's click on check. Now, here's the fun part. We can now scale this because this is a deployment. We can scale this to However, number of replicas we want, but in this example, we're going to scale it to three, right? So I can copy that right this time. Right click, paste. Okay. Um, replicas three. All right, let's hit enter. So now you can see it increased from one to three, All right? And now, because we have this load balance here, here uh, that's spreading, that, that's responsible for taking in the traffic and redirecting it to these pods, when we click on this one, we'll see that ATP6, which is this one, actually responded, right? And then when we click on it again, hopefully we get a different one. This DZ8P, which is that one, right? When we click on it again, okay, that's the same one. One more time, 8TP6. So it's basically trying to distribute the traffic there. Now it went to the last one, 8Z2B5. All right, so far, any questions? Am I still here? Yep, you're still here. Okay, good. <laughs> Last? Yeah, we had one presenter that talked for 45 minutes before he realized nobody was listening. He was here for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. I'm going to now click on next. So now let's see how we can do um, rolling deployments. Basically, we have version one that we released here, and let's say we have another version. So we have developers that are you know, creating new versions of this application. And so they said, hey, now we want to do, um, you know, just release version two. Let's give it a try, right? So we, what do we use? We use the simple deployment on this one, right? So simple deployment, simple right here. And let's look at this one here. And if I look at that one here, uh, to the right, okay. So we see that this is version one right now. Let's change it to version two, okay? So remember a long time ago when you, when you used to manage each server individually, think about having, we have like one, two, three different servers here. We'd have to SSH into each one of them and then we'd have to manually upgrade the application that's in there, right? Deploy it manually. Now, all we have to do is we just change the label here and we say, well, now I want to use version two, all right? So um, with that, let's do another kubectl apply dash f, and this is deployment simple, all right? That's what we have, that's the name of the file. And then if I hit enter. So now it's creating a new replica set, right? And this one actually has version two and I'll show you in a moment here. And as it's creating this one, it's killing off the old one. 
So basically, um, we can we we are doing this live. We're, we are upgrading the application live, and the new version is being deployed before the old version is being killed. So if we look at this one here now, click on this one here. We can see uh, where's that uh, image. All right, yeah, you can see there. Look at this one here, smaller. Okay, so this one here, we have the image here that says um, on the right, and scroll here, version two. Are you able to see this? So it's, this is version two now. So version one is gone. All right. Now, what if we said, hey, this does not seem to be working right. I want to roll back. So let's roll back to version one. Well, excuse me, where did, where did you say you could see the two? I didn't catch that. So um, here, so this is the, the, the box that we upgraded. Yeah. This one here on the name, it will open up on the right side, information about it. So here, the information it says here, version two. It's on line 30, right here. You see that? Um, yeah, I get the concept. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there. Okay, I see it. Yeah. Under containers. So, um, so now let's see if we're going to say, hey, version two is not working. I mean, there's some bugs or something. Let's go back, roll back to version one. So I just changed that number there in the YAML file, which is the deployment simple YAML. And then I just do another apply. Right, I just do another apply, enter. And so what happens is this replica set is going live again. It's creating that version one, and then it's killing off this one that has version two. So if we click on one of these right now, and we said it's around somewhere on line 30, right? So if we look at this one here on line 30, the end of that, see that? It's version one. So that's why this Kubernetes thing is very popular these days, because it's very simple for you to, if you're like an admin and you're deploying application, and you want to scale it up or you want to scale it down, you just change the contents of the config file and you issue an apply and it updates the whole infrastructure. So let's click on next. Okay, now this one is saying, okay, we're done with this, basically with this lesson. We're going to delete the deployment. So, you know, we say, okay, we want to scrap this application now. Let's kill all this server. So what we do is we issue a command Q CPL, Q control, delete. And then we want to delete the deployment and if you have a lot and you want to delete them all, then you pass it at the dash dash all. Or in my instance, I'll just delete the one that is named simple. Okay. So I hit enter. And then all of that is gone. All right. We deleted the deployment. Um, but we still have that load balancer out there which is what we call a service in Kubernetes. So we're going to remove that as well. So let's let me click next on this one and see what. Yeah, so right here. So the next one is we do a kubectl delete service simple. So note that in Kubernetes there's quite a few ways of doing the same thing. You can do a slash or you can just do a space. OK. 
Okay, and there's also a shortcut to service. You can do, you know, SVC. That's a shortcut. Let's try that. And there he goes. It disappeared. Okay. Move on to the next. All right. So this one is moving on to a little bit more complicated example. Um, the delayed server. So what happens is the thing that we want to show here or to learn about here is what happens if, if we have a server that because it, it contains a little bit more applications or it's a little bit more slower in coming up uh, because it has to do a bunch of self-configuration, then it starts up slow. So if it starts up slow, we might get into an instance where the application comes online before it is able to serve traffic, which means now we have a server that comes online and when, when users try to uh, access that server, it's returning an error because it's not yet basically ready. So that's, this is a scenario we want to look into. All right, let's move on. So this, we have an image here that is delayed server. Let's go to start tasks. Okay, and we have another deployment here. Let's go in here. Delayed, yeah. Okay, um, now let me do that. Apply. Let's copy this one here. Paste that one down here. <clears throat> Hit enter. Okay, so now we're creating this delayed server. So it's it's starting up. Right, it's starting up, but um, let's move on to the next. Let's expose this, okay? So one way, one shortcut to create a, um, a service in Kubernetes without uh, creating a file, a service YAML file that defines it, one quick way is just to give it an expose command. So we do a cube, cube CTL expose, and then we'll expose what? We expose the deployment, okay? Named delayed, okay? So again, you, you see the shortcut here. Um, it's, you can call it either deploy or you can give it the full name deployment. Okay, let me hit enter on that. And then it created a service here. Okay, it's basically just a cluster IP, which means that this one is, it will not get an externally um, available um, IP address. So if I click on this one here, so, this server is responding, click again. This other server is res responding, XL, XD9. One more, another server, 9VWXM is responding. Okay, so they're all alive and healthy. Let's click on next. Right, now what happens if we want to change it to version two? So let's go on to this delayed YAML and let's look for the version um, somewhere down here. Here's the image, line 22. Server, this is version two, right? Okay. Now the developers have created version two of the image and they said, okay, let's try and deploy that. Okay, so we do the same thing. We do an apply, kubectl apply, give it a file name, deployment delayed YAML, right? 
and then let me hit enter so what's basically going to happen is it will spin up a new replica set with the new pods okay let's do that so it's creating now notice that it's got this one here and then let's try that um let's try this one here i don't know if i can catch it in time so here so it's saying error trying to reach this device connection refused this is because it's a slow starting server that means it's not yet ready but because the server went up it got put into service by the deployment mechanism so what do we do to fix that is the question let's just click on next all right so we want to avoid the situation where a server comes online but it's not yet ready to serve traffic because it's still it's a little slow in coming up at this point in time we've given it a few minutes if, we, if i click here it's now responding so it's now healthy right but it took it a while the first time around it came up it's not yet ready to respond so there is a concept in um, kubernetes that's called readiness readiness probe and we're going to uh, work on that let's do the start tasks here okay and um, let's delete our deployment let's work on that let's, do a, let's delete that one first it, Delete, deployment delayed. Okay. So we we'll move that. Let's go next. Okay. So here is a here is an example. Um, this is what we want. We want to add this. This is the ready, readiness probe. It's going to check if the path in port 888 is ready or not. Okay, and it will wait at least an initial of five seconds and we'll retry again in the next five seconds. Okay, we're going to give it just success. If it succeeds one time, then we know we're good. So let me copy that whole thing here. Let's click copy. Go here. Okay, and we want, that's the delayed, all right, click on next. Okay, so where'd you put that in? Questions? Go ahead. Yeah. Where in the file did you place that? Does it go at the end or? Yep, I'll just add it here on the deployment delayed YAML. At the end of the file? Yep. There you go. Um, the details exactly of the contents of the file and things like that, um, that's a whole big topic. Um, and there's lessons, uh, there's a bigger lesson in Magic Sandbox, and I'm gonna show you there uh, later after we're done that you can go through. Um, and also the Kubernetes documentation, there's a lot of information there. Um, usually just copy and paste. <laughs> so let's try that. Okay, so that works. All right, so it's creating it. Okay. 
So now you see that it's taking a while before it comes online. Now this one is now online. So now if I click on this one, so now it's responding, the server is responding. Right? So these are like some of the constructs or concepts in Kubernetes. It makes it easy um, and allows you to uh, deploy applications without downtime as much as possible, basically. Okay. So let's click on next. Now let's see what happens if we scale this. We want to, right now we have one, two, three, basically three servers. Um, and we want the fourth one. So we scale it, right? So we do a cube CTL. By the way, you can also, Unix guys, we have this alias command, right? So we can just do alias K into cube CTL. Most people do that. So that we can just type K instead of typing the whole cube CTL. And then, um, and then you can also do an alias for uh, KA, and I usually do that. And then you can do a K apply dash F, right? And that's a shortcut. So I can just do KA if I want to do a deployment, right? So for this instance, right now we want to do a scale. So QCTL scale. So I just do a K scale deploy um, delayed. And then we want to scale that into replicas is four. Okay, so now it's coming up here. We have the fourth one coming up and it's not being added to the mix until it's ready. All right, so it takes a few minutes or a few seconds. Now it's ready. So it should be added into the mix and hopefully we should be able to hit it cqn the, the last digits is cqn so i keep on click cqn so finally it came out it's right here all right so far so good uh well no you, i got lost in the adding the text to that one file uh, do we need to have that before to move on or are we going to delete this and start over with something else no it's almost uh we're, we're almost done so basically what what i did is i just added it over here and because this is this is yaml file and it's you know sensitive in terms of the spacing that you put it so maybe if you put the wrong spacing uh, yep. you know then it might give you an error but basically, it should just line up the red. I just had it too many spaces, and so I'm all set. Yeah, too many spaces. So you just have to make sure that it lines up there pretty well. Um, it's a little hard to see because I, we have this small one. But after we're done, we're, we're almost done here. Um, after we're, we're done, I'm going to show it in a bigger file. Or actually, yep. Some parts. <clears throat> So I have a question for you. Yes, go ahead. When you brought up a version two, we saw a new replica set created and the original was emptied, Correct. but it was still around. If you went to version three, would you get a third replica set with two of them being empty? Yes, correct. And do we care about that? No, because uh, Kubernetes will eventually clean them up and and when you roll back to version one, which is exactly the same thing to, you know, the, like the prior replica set, then the, the, the prior replica set is being used. Okay, the thank you. replica set gets reused if you roll back to version one. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, move forwards. Okay, let's now let's do a rolling update again. And uh, this is where the replica set will come into play. And okay, where is that container? 
with here. Line 22. Okay, so what was the instruction here? Let me just go back. We wanted to work because or change the image version. Oh, it just wants us to change the image version. So we'll just do a, let's go back to version one, for example. Okay. And, um, and by the way, these files, these files are present on, you know, on the disk. So if you do an LS, oh, is there LS? Right here. So those files are, are right there, right? So they're present. And we can just actually, if you want to edit it, if you're more familiar with Vim, you can just do a Vim um, of deployment delayed YAML, and then you can just edit that way. If you know if, if it makes it easier for you, right? So that now um, we've changed that version so let me just double check what version this one is so I click this one it opens here and I should be able to see the version right here somewhere so this one says version 2 right and we just changed that to version 1 so now if I do a kubectl apply, remember we created an alias, right, ka, and then I can just do a deployment delayed YAML, hit enter, okay, and so now it's, as it creates, it deletes the old ones. So it's creating one, two, three, and then when it comes online, it's deleting the prior one. And we see that old replica set there that's empty, right? So uh, let's say we want to put it back to version one, which was the discussion earlier, what happens to the old replica set, because it still stays here, it's still this one. So if we click on this one, we actually see that you know, all the information about that particular replica set is, <coughs> is being uh, kept. And if we do a Vim of deployment delayed YAML, and we want to change this to back to version 2, and we save it, WQ, right and we do another apply ka deployment delayed yaml hit enter then that old replica set is being reused for version one okay and the new one is being drained as soon as this one goes live then the ones down here are being deleted Okay, let's click on next. And that's it. So this is a very quick introduction. Um, let me do another, um, I don't know if I can, if I do this. Oh, good, it's still visible. Right, okay. So you're able to see this, this one now, the bigger one? Yes. Oh, good. Oh, right. we're, we're seeing your 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 yeah. I'm seeing on, on the left on the right hand side it says replica set delayed, and it's got about fifty lines or so. Uh, yep. So what what do you do you still see the one with um? Oh, it's still, it's showing sharing, but I'm not sure. You may have to unshare and then share the separate screen. Okay. Let me just change my sharing then. Uh, change sharing. I just share the. Uh, 
Can I do an entire screen? I'll just do an entire screen. Okay, so are you seeing the one that says, thank you for following along? Yes. Yep. Good. All right. So uh, I still have that button up here. You see that thing that it's like a pop out button. So if I click that, then it opens up a new um, tab. And now it only has that portion where the files are and the commands are. So it's, you know, probably easier when you're doing it this way, but you can still go back there. Right, so it's the same session. So whatever I do here, whatever commands I issue here, it's gonna affect this one. So for example, this delayed, if I want to delete that, so I can type command here. I can say kubectl delete. Remember, we still have that alias here. So this is the same. Oh no, I lost it. Never mind. I lost it. <clears throat> So let me just do kubectl, see, delete, deployment. I'm not sure if it's still there. Let me just get it first. I think it might have been deleted with right? get deployments. Yeah, it's still there. So kubectl, delete, deploy, and the name is delayed, right? Let's call it deployment, delayed. Hit enter, and then if I go here on the other one, then it disappeared. We still have this service here, delayed service. So if I do kubectl get services, it will show that I have that delayed, the service name delayed. So I can do a kubectl delete service name delayed, hit enter. And if I go back here, it should have disappeared. Any questions so far? Okay, so that's uh, our very brief introduction on, onto some basic concepts in Kubernetes that allows us to deploy applications, hopefully with zero downtime, hopefully. Um, and now I'm gonna click on next here. And I'm going to show you something else. Let me see if I can go here. Oh, that's it. All right, so the link here that says workshop.msb.com if you replace this workshop with learn l e a oops l e a r n learn you guys can follow along learn msb.com And then we'll have another login here. See if you can log in with Google. Okay. And then here you have a full course uh, in Kubernetes. It includes introduction, the YAML, right? The pods, so introduction to pods, running a pod, infecting pods services we've seen that right we've seen the pods we've seen the yaml but it's very high level so all this is more detailed um, we have deployments here more detailed um, labels and selectors annotations config maps or where we store configuration in kubernetes secrets where we store you know some of the secret passwords um, batch jobs or uh, applications that run only for a short period of time. They're not long-lived. 
um, cron jobs that only run during specific period of, periods of time. We've done a health, health, health check. We've done that. We did the readiness probe. Right? And then there's some other resource requests and limits and that can test your, yourself too. So um, I have been given by the owners of the companies access to give people, um, you know, if you're interested in going through some of the lessons here, um, a trial version. I can probably give you guys a week. So the emails that I received, I'll, you know, if you, um, I'll just go back there and take a look at the emails I received and I'll give you guys each one a week of access. But for now, there should be some freebies here, I'm sure. You should be able to see some freebies here, probably up to services and deployments. Are you guys able to see this? Have you, anyone followed along? Uh, it looks like it's working on my end over here. Okay. Well, thank you so much. That's very generous. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Think we're done. Thank you. Are there any questions, comments, thoughts? Gib, please. So um, I'm really kind of interested in how to get started in terms of configuring an environment for this. Um, and it looks like you have like a sandbox that's already set up. So yes, getting to the point where I actually can run something on my own, you know, a little little server here in my house or something like that. Um, are any of these, this introduction at this top of this page, or any of this going to tell me how to get it, uh, how to download the file, how to install it, that type of thing? No, these ones are more of operator. This is like, you know, if it's already been set up and uh, you just want to operate it. Um, there are, if you look at, there's a really simple one uh, that you can run um, and, um, you know, like a small Kubernetes clusters. K3S is one of them. Um, Rancher has created it. So let me just do a search here. Uh, K3S, you see it. K3S. Oops, K3S. Number three S. So this is like a lightweight um, Kubernetes. It's created by a company named Rancher. Which and was Rancher uh, was chased by Suze. Yeah. Suzy. So um, yeah, I mean you can use this and you can even install it on uh, you know like one of those pies. Raspberry yeah. Pi. They're really small, um, small sized. You can install it on your laptop. So, and there's some instructions here too on how to get started. So, basically, you just download the latest release here. And, and normally, it's just a single file. You download the file. Um, and and then you you know you just follow along and execute the commands. So A3S. Um, Any other comments or questions? Yeah, so I'm interested more in understanding a little bit about MSB. You know, like a company, right? So, um, is this like you're selling training? Is that what the business model is? Yes, MSB um, is a company that um, they're in Germany, and I just happened to uh, work with the uh, the owners. Um, I played on their platform. I kind of like it. I like it because uh, it allows you to show people more in a visual manner uh, what happens when you type certain commands. And so, you know, I'm interested in in, in doing this as a full full blown course. And hopefully right now, this is more on the operator level. I'm talking to them and see if maybe we can create more of an, like an admin level type. Um, it's of course it's a, little bit, a little bit more complex when you're doing it that way um, in an environment where 
you know, everything is just browser based, right? You have the editor on the browser, um, your cluster on the browser. So, but yeah, so they have right now, this is what they have. They do training, but they do training for operators. Basically, if you're like doing deployments of pods and things like that. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? So, um, Cooper, for that yeah. question regarding um, setting up your own Kubernetes cluster. So, you can use this one here on um, the K3S on Rancher. There's, there's other packages there, but this one is the smallest and easiest so far that I've seen. Let me paste that into your channel. Yeah. And so it's got instruction there on how to do it. Yeah. Um, also, uh, there's another um, area, Katakoda. I don't know if you've heard of that site. I think that's gone, right? And they have a bunch here of uh, Kubernetes, you know, also browser-based learn yourself or do your do it yourself. Like for example, this one, Kubernetes introduction. It's also browser-based. So, and here it has teaching how do you launch like a single node class cluster. Right or a multi-node cluster using Cube ADM is more on the admin um, setting up site. So you can also go through that and click here, start scenario. It's also kind of like browser-based environment where you can type commands. So if you do a start scenario, then you have here your terminal, and then you can you know start mini cube and do things like that. So this is another one. And put it here. Okay, any more question? Go ahead, Coover. Yeah, Gemini, this is Coover. Uh, thank you very much for a great presentation. Um, I was I was one of the individuals who was not able to uh, type in and follow along uh, on the inference on the console itself. I did create my account. Are you going to, I guess I'm missing a little bit how we resolve some of the things, uh, being able to run items in the Magic Sandbox. I did jump over to the learn.msp.com and seems like that was functioning. So okay. is everything available on learn that isn't, sorry, is everything available on learn that wasn't necessarily, or is included in the prior one? Yeah, on, on, so on that workshop, there was more of an overview of a bunch of different things, like you know the ammo, the pods, the services deployments, right? And we even have a health check section there that we touched on. Mm -hmm. Um, they, so this one on the learn is more, um, it's more complete, but it's, it's a paid version though. I think there's a free version up until a portion of services and deployments, and then it's paid version after that. Um, okay. I, I should be able to give you at least a week free access for everything. So if you do sleepless nights, <laughs> you can probably finish it up in a week. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you very much. Sure. Any other questions? Yeah, I think I'll ask one. Um, hey, Go Gemini. Yeah, very, very good presentation. Ed. Definitely uh, cool to see the Magic Sandbox platform. Um, could you could you talk maybe a little bit about, like the limitations of the platform? Like, could we use it to do like a real like uh, test for our deployment, or is it more just uh, to like do, do some quick testing and go through some tutorials, or can this be used for like 
So this is more of a learning environment and uh, the the people that are that have started this, they're more interested in corporate. They do a lot of corporate training. So they use this to do corporate trainings. Um, and and I'm, I'm interested in helping out in doing teaching and things like that and sharing Kubernetes. So I kind of like the, the way they've set it up. But right now what it has, it's only a, a learning environment. They have some areas here for corporation that if you like to do teams, uh, you know, like within the company, so they can probably provide more, um, like more users in one company and maybe a less, you know, less expensive price. Right now, the price for this one is 299, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, right now, that's, I think that's a pricing for a year of access. Um, and then they also have to hear things like team tracking for companies and then like interviewing sandbox yeah, the, interviewing things like that yeah this is very awesome like being able to look into the container and getting some data out of it that's definitely yeah. would have been super helpful uh, to have that so if anyone needs more in-depth training um and maybe if we want to have spend more time on this one we we can we'll just set it up like outside of our like regular one hour once a month um presentation we can do you know like special get together or meet up just to go through the rest of the lessons and i i can pass, facilitate that you know very cool any other comments going once Going Gemini, the Scoover again. Uh -huh. Did you share any contact information with the group at all? Uh, yes, I. The, the board has all my contact information. Okay. I send it out there. Um, I guess I can just type it out here too. Uh, Thank you. I'm going to type it in the chat. It, it shouldn't stream or record. Yeah. Here I shared my email. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so I I will have to take a little bit of time. I have to do it one at a time when I'm giving people access to the sandbox. So if you can just email me uh, your information. Basically, when you email me, I've got your email address. Just email me through that email uh, that you're using to sign up through the Magic Sandbox, and I can help give that access. I noticed that you have your LinkedIn information on the mug.org website. Yep. So if somebody wants to contact you, that's available too. Yes, you can contact me there too. And I think um, someone already contacted me, one of our Supreme guys. Is that I'm trying to remember? Any other questions? I think Sharon Kalani. Oh, yeah. Sharon. Yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. I think Sharon is also in uh, education. Uh, I think he has a company that does trainings and stuff. So That's right. Yeah. Training, Sharon, we can provide them with Kubernetes training if they go through you. Yeah, I'll follow up with you offline. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, any other comments, questions? Okay, thank you very much, Jim, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I, thought, I thought that was really good. Thank this you. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do we want to do some more follow up on uh, other Kubernetes topics or any other things that have been going on in the in the world at large? So I'll go yes on Kubernetes. I'd like to, you know, I think this is a big topic here. Excellent. Yeah, I, I'd kind of like to see, um, I think Gib brought the question up. I'd like to see, uh, you know, how to how to just bring it up. You know, I've got no Kubernetes here at all. 
um, I, I, you know, I'd like to set up a server, install whatever I need to install on it, and get something running. And at this point, I don't even know what that is. But, but yeah, uh, I'd like to double down on that. Maybe even go back uh, a step or two. The last time I yeah. set up an application, it was one uh, database, one server, and yeah, uh, and, uh, kind of like what you'd have to do to set up an application to be able right. to run with multiple instances like that is, is right. a big flog to me. Yeah, kind of a uh, from the ground up kind of a thing. Right, where where you start in setting up an application. So I mean, you have a database out there. But now you got to have multiple servers against the same. I don't know where that you know how that breaks down and how that sets up. And that, that'd be yeah. Right. Well, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of that uh, going on at Ford, where we're moving to distributed databases and away from the mono, monochrome kind right. of monolithic. Yeah, monolithic. So it's uh, this is a big push throughout the industry to move to, you know, it runs anywhere and it has you know no dependencies and all that type of thing. Right. So if somebody could come up with a presentation on how you set up a distributed database that could run good. under Kubernetes, that would be a very, very good uh, presentation for me. Yeah, I, 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 I could even see just, you know, leave the database the way it is, but have your application servers all hitting your your database because, you know, your database might be Postgres, might be Oracle, it might be yeah, that's server. the way it's set up. Yeah, I, I don't even know that. I mean, if that's if that is, yeah. it's, uh, but I think there are places where you have multiple databases too. Don't I mean? I don't know. I, sure, sure. So, guys, I wanted to bring up this uh, the Raspberry Pi. If you're familiar, maybe we can get uh, some, some sponsorship. They're not too uh, expensive. Like one of the best ones are, you know, you got thirty five bucks every year, fifty nine. Yeah. Right. Yeah, crazy and powerful. If you do a Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster sure. uh, project, sure, and that might be fun for for people. So we'll, yeah, it's like a, right. like this, you know, like it looks like data center. <laughs> like we have about a few three three uh, Raspberry Pis there. We'll make a cluster out of, out of it. And yeah, so I I tried that. Uh, there was a book that I have that. Uh, I don't know, maybe I got that as one of our giveaways or something. Um, you know, Raspberry Pi cluster uh, for Kubernetes. And I found that this, the, the versions are moving too quick. You try to move, okay. you know, do this and then do that. And the version has moved off to what it was and does, they're no longer compatible. It's really tough to sort of get everything to coordinate together. Yeah, I can imagine. It's it. Yeah, I think this is, there's a lot going on in this space. Uh, as, as people keep banging on it and, and a lot more development comes about, uh, he said, yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, forget, forget Raspberry Pi for a minute. Uh, it's a fantastic platform. Yeah. But, um, you know, me, I'm in the enterprise world. I would love to be able to deploy my application where it can scale up and down. Uh, I've got a huge database that's not going to be distributed. It's just a database server. But my application certainly could run on several nodes at once. Yeah, and I'd love to see how to start getting that into a Kubernetes thing. Um, you know, what do I need for that? Is it? Uh, I, I imagine I have to learn Docker and Kubernetes and God uh, knows what else. Yeah, so uh, I'm sure many of you are aware, but the Raspberry Pi now has an eight gigabyte model available out there. Yes. Sure. And they, they, they've also released a 64-bit version of their mm -hmm. uh, the desktop that, uh, uh, sorry, the OS that they bundle with it. So yeah. you could uh, uh, theoretically have, you know, one single giant process occupy that address space and run it that way or have, uh, you know, a, a bazillion little processes running out there with that large an address uh, space. So it, it can work both ways here. Yeah. Any other comments? Uh, yeah, so I think maybe, maybe it'd be helpful too. We um, can do something. Uh, we'll just have to schedule it separately from our regular monthly. Yeah, definitely. Uh, honestly, that would probably be something to throw on to something like the discuss mailing list to get yeah. everyone on yeah. there. Uh, and coordinate that. I think that'd be awesome. It'd be really cool. 
I think it might be helpful just to mention the benefits of like Kubernetes as a platform itself, like the reason for doing this, like what, what, what are some of the advantages or like oh, the right. reason you use it or the like what, what kind of speed up do you get? What, why should I consider it is kind of what I'm wondering. Yeah. Right. I keep hearing everybody saying, oh, you should use it. Why? Uh, if you've got your hand up uh, to speak, go ahead and, and unmute yourself um, because this is more free form uh, than, than anything. And I see several hands up, but I'm not sure if that's from previous things. That's the only unfortunate thing is with this platform is you can't tell everyone to to turn off their their hand stuff or turn them off automatically for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to comment for a moment on why Kubernetes. So what I'm seeing, at, you know, people that are talking about it at work, is everything becomes um, you know homogenous. You don't care anymore where it's running. So if data center A goes down, everything just continues to run. Everything is replicated across different subnets, across different you know databases, all that type of thing. So yeah, if you get your, if you get all your resources set up properly, you know, they're also talking about things like uh, service, uh, you know, basically code as service, and so you're no longer dependent on everything. So everything is separated so that you're just calling services all the time. So um, your database isn't even necessarily uh, you know, tied to a specific uh, device or uh, data center. So it becomes a real big, you know, simple thing to make this all uh, work if you just follow certain rules. Um, cloud native is the phrase that I've heard people talk about. So when you're using cloud native, you don't have any dependency on what particular hardware you're running on. So you don't have like a file system. So you're not making calls to file systems. Instead, you're calling services that store data. There's a little lot to that. Right. Uh, quick note, by the way, before everyone decides to disappear, uh, we do have a comment card link in there. Uh, it's the forums.gle link in the chat. Uh, there's also, I think I posted it to the, um, to the discuss mailing list as well. If you would fill that out and let us know how we're doing, uh, give us any ideas that you might have and such, that would be excellent. Um, yeah, we'd really appreciate that. Thank you.